hey, Orchard Kids, do you know what you want to be when you grow up? I bet that's a question you hear a lot. I know I did when I was little. Maybe you want to be a firefighter. Or maybe you want to be a police officer. Maybe you want to be a singer. Or maybe you want to be a doctor. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a veterinarian, but God had other plans for my life. Now, I'm a wife, a mother, and a disciple of Jesus. I get the privilege of teaching some pretty amazing lessons each week to all of you. Did you know that in our lesson today, Jesus gave his disciples a very important job to do? Actually, it was not just a job for his disciples. It was also a job for all who follow him. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew 28, 16 through 20, as we take a closer look at our lesson and this very special job Jesus asks his followers to do. Now, don't let this lesson fool you. It may only be a few short verses, but this lesson, oh, it's a great one. And it has a powerful message. So here we are, the mountain Galilee, where Jesus told his disciples to meet him. Now remember our timeline these last few weeks. We've learned about Jesus and how he died on the cross, and then he rose again. And he has now been spending the last 40 days with his disciples, continuing to teach them about furthering God's kingdom. I love how Jesus still continues to teach, even after his death and resurrection, don't you? But it was now time for him to go back to heaven. And when the disciples saw Jesus at this mountain in Galilee, some worshipped him. But some, they still had their doubts about whether it was truly him or not. But before he ascended into the sky, he gave his disciples a very important message about what they should do. Many people call this the Great Commission. And it's called this because to commission someone... That means to send them to do a mission or a job. Have you ever heard of it? The Great Commission? I bet you have. Now, in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, this is where Jesus gave his disciples and everyone who follows them that very important job I was telling you about. So let's break these two verses down, okay? He said, go into the world and preach the gospel. Make disciples of people from every nation. Now the word disciple, that means follower. Jesus wants his followers to tell people all over the world how to be rescued from sin and death by trusting in him. Then those people who believe become disciples or followers of Jesus too. Now Jesus also said, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You may have heard people say this during a baptism. The Father is God. The Son is Jesus who saves us, and the Holy Spirit will come to new believers to give them power to live a new life for God. And when new believers are baptized, they're showing the world that they have turned away from sin, and they're putting their trust in Jesus as their Savior. It shows others that just like Jesus died and rose again, we go into the water and come back out, signifying that we also have new life with him. Now, Jesus continues. It says, teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. So people who've trusted in Jesus as their Savior have now been baptized. And now they need to know how Jesus wants them to live their life. You see, there's this change that happens when you put your faith in Jesus. When you really trust in him, now you'll have this desire to live your life for God and his will, not yours. See, when we know what Jesus wants from us and we go do it, that's called obedience. And it's our job to help new disciples understand that. We need to teach them about what the Bible says and how they can apply it in their own lives. Then Jesus said, remember this, 
I am always with you until the very end of the age. Did you notice anything about that very last part? What promise does Jesus leave us? That's right. He is always with us. We're never alone. It's not going to be easy for these disciples to tell the world about Jesus. People were going to hate them because of their message. People were going to even try to stop them from telling others about him. But they didn't have to be afraid because Jesus promised to be with them. And we know Jesus' promises they're true. And the same is true for us. Sometimes it might be scary or difficult to share the news of Jesus with others, but we always have him right there with us. Isn't that so comforting? One of Jesus' names is actually Emmanuel, and that means God with us. Through the Holy Spirit, Jesus is always with us. In fact, Jesus said he was with us, remember what I said, until the very end of the age. That means once all the nations have heard the good news, God's kingdom, Jesus, is going to return. At the end of age, believers will be reunited with Jesus forever. The good news about Jesus and what he's done to rescue us from our sins, that's too great to keep to ourselves. Jesus died for us. Then he came back to life. And when we choose to trust in him, we get to live with him forever in eternity. I want you to think about this. We follow Jesus because someone first told us about him, right? That person was able to tell us about Jesus because someone else before them obeyed this great commission that we're talking about. We are disciples of Jesus because God worked through these first disciples in our lesson today so very long ago. Because the first disciples obeyed Jesus and preached the gospel to all the people, the message of the gospel has now reached us. Now let's pretend these dominoes are the people sharing the gospel. The first disciples are at the beginning, and here we are at the end. The disciples, they had no clue that the message they were preaching back then would get passed down and preached all the way to us today. See how that worked? But should we stop at us here at the very end? No, no, now it's our job to keep it going. We can't stop here. It's our job to spend our lives telling others about the gospel. Only God knows who and how many will reach just by telling others about Jesus. You'll never know how many you reach. We are called to love and serve one another, to share the gospel or the good news with those around us. This might be people far away. They may be close to us. There's so many people all over the world, and there's so many ways to share God's love with others. Everyone, everywhere is our mission field. The possibilities are endless, guys. God places people in our lives on purpose. We all have people we interact with that might not know Jesus. Maybe God is calling you to share faith with a neighbor, a family member, a teacher. Maybe it's a friend. I challenge you this week to think about those around you and who you can share the good news of the gospel with. It's your job, Jesus said so. Now go and make disciples, you guys. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, we love you. And we are just so thankful that Jesus still continued to teach even after his death and resurrection because it is important that everybody knows who you truly are. God, don't let it stop with us. Give us the opportunities to share Jesus with others and what he did and how if we put our trust in him, we can be with you in eternity forever. God, this life is not the end. We can live in eternity with you, and that is the most beautiful thing. We love you, and your name we pray. All right, guys, let's get up. Let's sing our hearts out for God. 
We'll see you next week. is an ocean, you can drown me, the sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste the sea, I'm under grace, the place to be, it means I'll never need an umbrella, I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather, whether or never I ever, understand I'm a man in the hands of great plans, I stand with faith there in the life, I never know to touch, and still I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of, what's the hope in, what's the doubt for, live to no end, this is living, the life I'ma give as a gift, if I'ma live it, I'ma live it to death, so what's the dream of, what's the hope in, what's the doubt for, and live to no end, this is living, the life I'ma give as a gift, if I'ma live it, I'ma live it. Living yeah. now.